It is really good to be back uh, during this uh, Easter season. It seems like uh, Easter Sunday was a long time ago, but we're still celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. Uh, you know, this, this object uh, that I'm by here is the baptismal font. Last week I started up by the altar. That's an object of faith. Reminds us of the great sacrifice of Jesus. But the altar that he died on was that cross. This is where the Apostle Paul says that we uh, are identified with Christ. We were drowned with him in the waters of holy baptism. We died with him. And now we have been raised with him <clears throat> through the power of the word. And I want you to hear how uh, Peter ties this water crossing to another water crossing in the Bible. In 1 Peter, it says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah. Now, while the ark was being prepared in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into the heaven and is, in, and is at the right hand of God with the angels and authorities and powers, having been subjected to him. All authorities, all powers have been put under the feet of Jesus. And we have been adopted into his family as his children. And as his children, we praise him.
ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your love is devoted. continue our series on the fruits of the Spirit. You know, after Jesus uh, was raised from the dead, uh, he did show himself many times to people. One of the last things he did with his disciples was he promised them a gift, uh, another person that he was going to send. Uh, it was the promise of the Holy Spirit, and it says in John chapter 14, "'If you love me, you will keep my commandments.'" And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him or knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you 
and will be in you. Because the Holy Spirit is in us, because that promise has been fulfilled, these fruits are ours. And today, uh, we're taking a look at, at kindness. Uh, and so Carly's here again to visit with the kids. Uh, so we look forward to her message on kindness. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, so we're going to be talking about the fruit of the spirits again. And so let's just review some of the spirits that we've talked about so far. Remember, our apple was love. And then we had our cherries, which were which was joy. And then we had our pear, which was peace. And then patience was our banana. And so this week we're going to be focusing on kindness, which is going to be our lemon. And we'll add that to the basket. And so kindness. Let's see what some of our friends, show, what they do to show kindness. Last week, my friend and I wanted to share kindness by painting some cute rocks and by leaving them on the doorsteps. I, for kindness, I'm doing a happy birthday card because it's almost my little brother's birthday. Be kind. The kindest of it's not up. This might take a while, okay, Mom? Okay. Did you hear that the balloon got the best grade on the test? Did you? No. Well, it did. It rose to the top of the class. <laughs> Something you could do to be kind is read a book to one of your brothers including a joke book. Those were awesome ways to show kindness. Thank you so much for sharing those. So what we're gonna do today is gonna do a little experiment to kind of help demonstrate kindness even more. So what I have is a bowl full of water here and I'm gonna add some pepper. And the pepper is gonna represent the people in your life, like your mom, your dad, your grandmas and grandpas, brothers and sisters, and even strangers. So what I have next is a bar of soap. That's gonna represent when you are being unkind to those people, like you're fighting with them or you're saying um, not so nice things. Watch what happens to the pepper. The pepper kind of separates and they move away from the soap because no one wants to be around someone when they're being mean or they're not saying nice things. Now I'm gonna add some sugar. Sugar is sweet, and just like sugar is going to represent the kindness. When you're saying nice things and sweet things and being kind, like helping mom and dad around the house, or maybe just saying hello to a stranger. Now watch what happens to the pepper. The pepper then moves back towards the sugar. So what that means is with the sugar, when you're saying and you're being kind, and saying those nice things, people want to be around you, they wanna be your friend, and they love when you are being kind. And so we wanna ask Jesus to put the spirit of kindness in our hearts so then we can learn to be kind to one another. Um, please say a little prayer with me. Dear Jesus, please help me, please put the spirit of kindness in my heart so you can help me to be kind to one another and to moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas, brothers and sisters, amen. Thank you all for joining me this week as we talked about the spirit of kindness. Your homework this week is to show kindness towards someone, whether it be a stranger, your mom or dad, brother or sister, just show them some sort of kindness. Join me next week as we talk about another fruit of the spirit. Wow, it's hard to believe we're uh, just a little over. This, this is the middle of the nine different fruits of the Spirit. And, and, and it's, it's really great that uh, we're able to go through this during the Easter season and, and see how God's at work with us. You know, I've been doing different kinds of fruit uh, that, that uh, these uh, kind of remind us of this or compare uh, to the fruits of the Spirit. And last week was... Uh, a rather exotic fruit, wasabi. Uh, tonight, uh, I thought about uh, uh, apple, an apple. But you know, 
I, I thought, nah, that doesn't work. Apple's harder, kind of like a baseball. You can really chuck one of those at some. And, uh, but, and then I thought of a lemon uh, for kindness, and I didn't think very long on that because uh, lemons are very sour. And, and you know, the, the fruit of the spirit of kindness is, is sweet. Uh, but then I thought of a kiwi, a kiwi that's uh, both soft and fuzzy. And, and when you think about it, uh, we, we often attribute softness to people that are kind. Uh, maybe even people that could be taken advantage of sometimes. Uh, on, on the other hand, inside of a kiwi is a very uh, sweet but yet tart uh, flavor. And, and I like the tartness because the reality is that the fruit of kindness is not for the weak of heart. It's not for soft people. Uh, but actually, it's, it's, you need to be tough to exercise and to employ the fruit of the Spirit in regard to kindness. See, it's, it's a fruit that endures uh, even in the face of ridicule and rejection. To bring and deliver loving actions and words into people's lives. Listen to the lesson that I picked from Titus that helps us understand uh, this fruit uh, a little better. And it starts uh, in chapter 3, verse 3. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray. Slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing uh, our days with malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. But when the goodness of loving kindness of God, our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of works by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Spirit, whom He poured out in our, us richly, through Jesus our Savior. So that being justified by grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The saying is trustworthy and true. I want you to insist on these things so that those who have lived in God may be careful to devote themselves to God, to good works. These things are excellent and profitable for people. As we look at this, uh, I wonder, how is it that you would define kindness? I mean, uh, there's a lot of words that come to mind for that. It's to be caring or be nice to people, to help them out when you see a, you see a need, uh, to recognize people and where they're at in life, and how you might be able to help them. Uh, to continue on. It's, it's actually a word that can be translated not just kindness, but compassionate. To have compassion on people, no matter how they got into the place they find themselves. You know, uh, Paul's picture here of, of kindness is, is in a context, in, in especially in verse three, uh, 3, where you have people, it says, we including Paul, he, he was things like foolish, he was disobedient, he, he had been led astray, slave to different kinds of passions, and, and there was hatred, hatred for each other and hatred for others. And when you think of Paul, he, nobody hated the Christians more than Paul. And, uh, and, and so he's talking about himself, and he includes us, in these things. We might even say, gee, that's talked about as in our past, because, you know, we can still be envious of each other. We can still uh, have hatred at times for people, and, and sometimes justifiably so. But Paul is talking about a different kind of kindness. And that's what's so incredible and marvelous about the kindness of God for us. You see, while we were yet sinners, He died for us. I want you to think of uh, robots. You know, I, I came from a community where they had a lot of robotic uh, uh, 
plants where people, uh, robots were putting together machines. And uh, I, I just saw a robot uh, when I was on vacation not too long ago, and it was those little floor cleaners, those round ones, you know, and they, they kind of zoom around the place. And, and I, I got to thinking this week, if you had a robot that was messing things up, say you had a hardwood floor and you put one down and there was, it was defective and it started scarring up and scratching your beautiful wood floor. I don't think you'd keep that robot around very long, would you? It'd be out of there. It'd be on the junk heap of robots. Now, we're not robots, but in the same way, you and I have scarred and messed up the beauty of God's creation, including the crown of His creation, including you and me. We have scarred and messed it up, and yet God would never think of throwing us on the junk heap of those who have messed up His creation. He has too much kindness. That's what's amazing and marvelous. You see, the picture uh, of kindness that Paul draws for us today is in the words of the Scriptures right here. There's two words I want to call your attention to. The first word is krestos. You know, like the toothpaste, crest, tos, krestos. That's the word for kindness. But there's another word that's very similar to it, right? Christos. Christos is the anointed one. And Paul uses both these words right here in this passage, but the reality is these two words really aren't related at all. They're not related in in regard to where they come from or what they mean. But in that day, about... Uh, in the first century A.D., the, the pagans and the histor- history writers would talk about the Christians worshiping Krestos. The Christians worshiping kindness. Because they misunderstood that what they were really worshiping was Christos, the Anointed One, Jesus, the Messiah. But when... You think about it, they really didn't have it all that wrong, did they? You see, because Christos, the anointed one, Jesus, came to be the exact representation of God in bodily form. He came to exhibit God's heart of Christos, kindness, to all people. And He did that perfectly on the cross. And it's what He wants for us today. If you look at the 8th verse again of this passage, it says, the saying is trustworthy and true. I want, you, I want to insist on these things. He, he, this is very strong language. So that those who have believed in God, that's you and me, may be careful to devote themselves to good works. And it's these things that are excellent and profitable for people. God wants to use us. He wants us. And we are able to devote ourselves to being kind because of what He has done. Because of the power He's put in us. In Titus chapter 5b, the the second part of this passage of verse 5, but according to His mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Spirit, whom He poured out on us richly through Jesus our Savior, so that being justified by grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. That's why we can devote ourselves to kindness. That's why we can choose kindness in place of selfishness. We can show kindness even to people that don't deserve it, just like we didn't deserve it from God. We can show kindness to them, compassion. Because, you know, we're all in the same boat. We could all be thrown on the junk heap of those that have marred His creation. In Luke chapter 6, verse 35, it says, 
and reminds us of this. But love your enemies and do good and lend expecting nothing in return and your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High for He is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful even as your Father has been merciful. His kindness didn't give to us what we really deserved, did it? In fact, He took that on Himself. Instead, His kindness gave us what we don't deserve. His love. His forgiveness. And that's what it means to be kind to others. Oh, sure, we might be taken as soft. We might even get squished sometimes like a kid that grabs that kiwi and squeezes it until the juice runs down his arm. Just like Jesus was squeezed to death and His blood ran red on that cross. But we're still tough. We are eternally tough because of the Spirit that lives in us. In the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, kindness can flow. Amen. I've asked the GAP uh, team of prayers, God Answers Prayer, uh, to just kind of help us go back and pray over the fruits of the Spirit that we've experienced so far. Heavenly Father, we come before you with thanksgiving in our hearts and we give you praise for your Holy Spirit's indwelling presence. As believers in Jesus, as Savior and Lord, our roots grow deeper each day in you as we read your word and talk with you. And we rejoice today that we are growing strong in you and we're producing the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the fruit of love, your love, becoming evident in our lives as the Holy Spirit transforms us into the image of Christ. What a privilege we have to love those who are difficult to love, people who have offended us, used us, rejected us. We can't make ourselves love anyone, but you, Lord, reach them through us and enable us to love. Forgive us, Father, for limiting the receiving of your Spirit and therefore stopping the flow of your love through us. So right now, Father, we open our hearts to you and we say, yes, Lord, fill us up. May we experience your love and release the fruit of divine love. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, thank you for the fruit of joy. Help us to remember that real joy isn't found in having the best of everything, but in trusting that no matter what our circumstances, Lord, you make the best out of everything for us. Help us to remember that joy is a choice, no matter if we're dancing on the mountaintops or mourning in the valleys. You always are there to place blessings before us. Help to open our spiritual eyes so that we can see, even in our darkest of times, that there are things that we can find joy in each day. Lord, I know that you wish for us to have joy, and that joy is written about just over 200 times in the Bible. Joy is an outward sign of our own inward faith in your promises. Help us to be brave and trusting and to, make, and to take comfort in your promises even when we can't see the big picture. For those, of us that are, for those of us that try to seek joy each day, help us to bring some joy into the lives of those that you place before us. Help us to listen close, see the needs, and shed some of our personal joy and blessings on those who are struggling and in need of a pick-me-up. May is Mental Health Month, Lord, and especially in this pandemic, we are seeing suicide numbers climb even in our youth. Shelter in place, limited contact, and no hugs and hand-holding for those who need and thrive on physical touch has put a burden on so many in our community. 
I lift them all up to you today. Comfort them. Please place the right person, devotion, Bible passage, or sign the in front of them so that they can see that they are so truly loved by you and those around them. Lord, they need joy more now than ever. Awaken them to see the small blessings that are in each day. Joy is the outpouring of our gratefulness. Help us all to be humble enough to be grateful in all circumstances and to lift up our neighbors and to help shed light on the areas in their lives as well so that they can or we can intercede for them to prayerfully thank you and each gift that will only help to lead us to acquiring your joy. I'm reminded of 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, where we're commanded to be joyful always, pray continually, and to give thanks in all circumstances. <clears throat> help us to remember that prayer is our connection directly to you, the giver of all things that are good. I come before you today, pour out all these requests and prayers of adoration. Lord, we thank you that we as a congregation can continue to meet in our homes and have worship sent to us via technology. We thank you that our congregation is close and checks in on one another. We also thank you to our congregation that has remained healthy for the most part and that many of our congregation members have been able to continue work to serve others in their daily job activities. Lord, we lift up those that did have interruption in job and school. May they still find the simple blessings that you've provided along this journey and believe to take us back to what we think is normal. It is with a joyful heart that I bring all these things to you today and knowing without a shadow of a doubt that you hear us and are in total control. Amen. Gracious and loving Lord, we all want peace. Peace for this, peace for that. And sometimes even when we pray for peace, we can't just find those right words. But the right words for us are found in Psalm 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he commands his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves you, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show my salvation. Heavenly Father, may your peace whisper to our hearts about how good you are and how much you love us. Jesus, thank you for the opportunities to practice our patience, challenging as it can be. Although being in the midst of it isn't fun, may it make us stronger and more compassionate. Please show us how to be patient. Soften us when our selfishness makes us hard. Give us the capacity to show love and understanding and make our words full of empathy, our actions encouraging. When we are facing unanswered prayers or maybe simply the answer wait, let us trust you. 
because even when the waiting is hard, we are sure that you not only have everything in control, but your timing is always good. It can be tempting to rush ahead and act as if we know best, but with humble hearts, we will learn to patiently await your plans. Thank you for walking this journey with us. Lord, we want to thank you for having compassion on us that you would give your life for all our sins. We just ask that you help us be like the Good Samaritan that had compassion on the person that was beat up on the side of the road and everybody passed him by. Help us to have hearts like you, Jesus, and to have hearts like the Good Samaritan that took the time to stop and give aid to those that needed it. We just ask that you help us to be able to respond to all those people during this time of need that we can see them with open eyes and that we respond to their needs, not only spiritual, but also physical needs. Help us to be kind and friendly to them. Help us to show your love that you set as an example for us to follow. We just ask that you help us to come with passion and serve those that are in need and help us to see and respond how you want us to be kind and compassionate, whether it is to a neighbor, a friend, a workmate, or a relative. Just help us to become more like you and give us the power of your Holy Spirit to help us to have the confidence and the assurance that we can do what you want us to do. Hi, Amy. Hello. It is great to have you with us here uh, today. Uh, this week we're, we're emphasizing uh, another fruit of the Spirit. Uh, but overall, we, we're kind of looking at all the fruits. But before we actually get into that a little bit, um, I'd like to ask you to share a little about your immediate family. I know you guys are uh, pretty new grandparents here. and So just, just fill us in on uh, your family a, a bit here. Sure. Um, well, I've been married to Dean for um, about 37 years. We met in college. And... Um, Let's see, I have, we have two kids. Um, our oldest is Carl and he's married to Renee and they have a daughter and then there's also another one on the way in August, so we're excited about that. And then um, our younger son is Brian, he's two years younger than Carl and he lives here in town. Um, so we get to see him once in a while, which is good, um, even in spite of all the things that are going on, so. Good. Well, uh, I, I appreciate you taking the time to be with us today and. Sure. You know, we've all, uh, as we walk with the Lord, uh, we do in the Spirit. He's given us the Holy Spirit, and I, I really thank God for the faith He's given to you. Uh, but could you just share a little about uh, what it's been like and, and how it's been with you and your walk with the Lord and how the Spirit has uh, caused fruits to work in your life? Sure. Um so um, I grew up Catholic and uh, met Dean in college, like I said, and um, he was Missouri Synod Lutheran all his life. And um, we got married shortly after college and um, I started attending the church that um, he was going to at graduate school. And um, I went through instruction, adult instruction there and, and got confirmed. And um, we, um, we lived in Kentucky for a little while, out on the East Coast for about eight years, and then we were brought to um, Sioux Falls, which were, we were both from Wisconsin, so glad to get back to the upper Midwest. Um, and um, I really, I think through uh, meeting Dean and his family and seeing their relationship that they had with the Lord, I was able to um, see what, what that means in, in other people and wanted part of that in my life. And then um, after we moved here, we got more involved with church and Bible study, being in the word and that those kind of things just help, I think, 
um, solidify those fruits of the spirit in a person. So, um, I, and um, I, I've seen through the course of this series that we're doing that, um, you know, the first one we started out with was love. Mm -hmm. And then um, the next one we went into was joy. And I saw that joy seemed to come out of love uh, from the way things have been progressing. And then the next one was peace. So we have God's love, God's joy, and then because we have those things, then we get God's peace um, that just seems to be the next progression. And then, um, so we have love, joy, peace, and then patience was last week. And, you know, we have God's love, we're filled with joy, we've got God's peace, and out of that we can find patience. Mm -hmm. So then, of course, this week now, um, we're talking about kindness, and um, I think that that the next, this seems to be just the next natural progression um, mm -hmm. after love, joy, peace, and patience. And we've got kindness that just, which is flowing out of the next, you know, the, out of the other things that we've talked about. Yeah. And, and you did uh, something with us a oh, week or two ago and about how you remember uh, what the, they are. Oh. Could you share that with the folks? Sure. Sure. Um, so, um, there, there's nine um, fruits of the spirit. Three of them are one syllable. Three of them are two syllable and three of them are three syllable. So love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Yeah. And that's how I've been able to remember them. Yeah. I, I use something else, but I could have used that a long time ago. And it was just really cool to, to hear, but. When you when you think of kindness and you know and these fruits and uh, how how has been your walk? I know I asked you to do this because uh, you know you're always dropping off things for us here and uh, there's different things. You, you're really involved in the prayer ministry, which is a ministry of kindness and compassion. And, and has it always been uh, kind of easier for you? Are there people in your life that influenced you that way or? Sure. Um, so, you know, it, I think depending on maybe um, what stage of life you're in and how things are going in your life, um, some of the fruits of the Spirit can be easier than others. Um, I always look back to working with Sandy Tams in the preschool program at Sioux Falls Lutheran School. Um, she was a great mentor for pretty much anything and um, very filled with all the fruits of the Spirit. and. Um, I think that it was easy to um, working with her to um, to have kindness. Um, I think for a while after I was done working at Sioux Falls Lutheran, um, I think that I kind of got away from fruits of the spirit and um, and kindness too. Um, it was easy to fall back into my old sinful self and be selfish. And I think when you're selfish, then those fruits are a lot harder to, to show and to do. And kindness wasn't really a thing for a while because I was being selfish and I wanted things my way and I wanted it now. And, um, you know, patience went out the window. And um, through a, a series of events, um, there were some different people that I was then surrounded with um, work-wise and, and um and situations changed with work. I was able to actually do um, a lot more work from home. And, um, and then the, some of the people that I've been working with, um, it was just a different environment, which helped bring back those fruits of the spirit and kindness kind of came back to me again, so. Yeah, and, and I really appreciate you sharing how it can be a struggle sometimes based on what we're going through. And mm -hmm. Uh, but it looks like uh, in this case, especially uh, to be surrounded by people that uh, that God brings into our life helps to focus on the right thing. Yeah. Yes. So, so in terms of uh, your ministry with the prayer ministry, what drew you into that, and and uh, what do you sure. like about that? Yeah, so um, with the prayer ministry, um, we had a group years ago from King of Kings um, in Omaha that came up and did some training. And um, it was very, very good and informational material. 
And um, I didn't see myself as much of a prayer warrior at the time, but I was willing to be sort of the background person and take care of logistics. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I got involved in um, helping with getting everyone's email addresses and addresses from Dolores and um, getting emails sent out to people and postcards that said, hey, we're praying for you. Mm -hmm. And just kind of keeping on top of that on pretty much a regular basis. Every once in a while, I'd miss a month and a couple of the prayer warriors would email, hey, we didn't get a, we didn't get a list this month. I was like, oh, gee whiz, I forgot. I was busy doing other things. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I mean, that that's kind of how I got into it was, was, um, you know, I was happy to do the logistics behind it. Mm -hmm. um, since then, I've become much more comfortable with prayer and and being able to to say prayers and lead prayers. So, yeah, yeah. and prayer is such an important ministry of kindness because uh, kindness actually means compassion too. And and uh, and so we really appreciate how God has used your uh, uh, the fruit of kindness to move you into wanting to be a part of that ministry and work with that. But. Uh, you know, I, I, I just want to reiterate something you brought up here today, and I don't know if we've talked about it a lot, but that we can go through those, um, those dry times in our life when mm -hmm. uh, the Spirit is always there, the fruits are always there, but uh, for, because of what we're going through, it can be tough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you for, for sharing that and how God worked to help you come out of that and to yeah. be in the spirit again uh, through mm -hmm. his word, mm -hmm. through the encouragement of others. Uh, can sure. I pray for you today, Amy? Yeah, that would be great. Okay. So, can I just say one more thing? Yes. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to, to do just little things, um, hold a door for someone, mm. smile at someone. And the smiling is a little hard when you're wearing a mask, <laughs> but you know, yeah. sometimes if your eyes can light up, you know, then, then that can make a difference, but holding a door for someone or, or even like when you're driving and someone is a little bit in front of you, you see that turn signal on, they want to change lanes. It's okay. Let off the accelerator and let them in. Um, it, it's surprising what even just little things do. Um, there were, there was a time where I would um, sort of wait when I'd get out of my vehicle at the grocery store, if I saw someone unloading groceries mm -hmm. so that I could time it just right, I'd be walking past their vehicle just when they'd be done. And I'd say, Hey, can I take your cart for you? I'm going that direction anyway. Those kind of things are so easy. Um, yeah. You know, it, it not, not anything difficult, not anything that, that puts a burden on a person, but it really can make someone else's day. Um, a quick email or a quick comment. Hey, you did a great job. Wow, I really like that. Mm -hmm. Wow, that was inspiring. It's amazing what just a little comment can do to someone to help them. Yeah. So, and I, I found, today, yeah, you have to find those little ways. Yeah, especially today, how, you know, everybody can be pretty burdened and, and having to right. work. Yeah. So I really appreciate uh, how, again, it's not big, grand things we do. It's, it's just the day-to-day -day right. little things. Yep. And that's uh, something we can start a day praying for, right? Lord. Right, exactly. Lord, help me to see uh, where you're at work and how I can make a difference. Right. Thank you, Amy. I really appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's pray. Dear Lord, it's uh, been great to be here with Amy today, and, and I thank and praise you for the for the faith that you have created in her by the power of the Spirit and uh, and by that same power have uh, not only gifted her with gifts of helps and, and other ways that she's been able to help in ministry to others, but also uh, just being able to use those fruits. Uh, sometimes uh, we're encouraged in that uh, more easily with the people who are around and other times it's a challenge. Uh, but Amy, uh, was able to share with us today, Lord, uh, how you were able to use uh, not only people in your word, but your spirit to uh, to help her to be able to focus on those outside of her instead of on herself. We all have that tension. We all have that uh, desire to, to please you. And, and the way you move us to do that is by sharing with others the blessings you've given to us in Jesus, in his name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Amy. I really appreciate being with you today and uh, looking forward to hearing the rest of the fruits. And it's uh, three syllables, two syllables. And then we did one syllable to start with. So right, right. I'll never yep. forget that. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's good. Looking forward to a time when we can all see each other again oh, face to face and, yeah. and, and hug. And yeah, it'll be great when we get there. We'll pray it soon, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, God's peace be with you. God's peace with you too. Thank you, Amy. We have a God that has given us his whole heart. Um, and it's because of his love for us. He, he made us his children through baptism. He's, he's empowered us with his Holy Spirit. And he's given us many gifts through that spirit, but he also produces fruit. God bless you in the kindness that he has given you to share with those around you.
God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save.